Over the last 10 years, the Department of Radiology at the University of Florida College of Medicine has conducted a simulation-based evaluation of radiology resident competence in critical care imaging. 328 residents interpreted this case of an overinflated endotracheal tube cuff as one of 65 cases during an 8-hour simulated on-call shift, with a median score of 2 out of 10 and an overall average score of 2.24 out of 10. Overall, the average number of points lost out of 10 to observational discipline was 7.54. At the same time, 0.09 points were lost due to interpretive errors on the part of the residents. We define an effective report to be one which achieves scores between 7 and 10. In terms of letter grades, this would be an A or a B. In this most missed case, 4% of residents produced effective reports. We define a report having a critical error to be one with scores between 0 and 2. In terms of letter grades, this would be an F or a D. In this most missed case, 70% of residents produce reports with critical errors. This is an inpatient who was sent down to the radiology department uh, as an adult with a persistent airway edema. The nature of the airway edema or the extent really isn't known to us on this particular study. It was probably some sort of an angioedema related to a drug reaction, but in any case, the patient comes to us intubated. And as is typically the case, when the patient is intubated uh, through the mouth with an endotracheal tube, uh, we get the uh, soft palate sort of pushed back and up and then accumulated secretions and nasopharynx. That's all normal. Also, what happens is the upper airway collapses around the tube that's in the uh, oropharynx and hypopharynx. That's also expected. So as we move down through the hypopharynx here, there may be a little bit of edema, um, and a little bit more going on at the level of the true cords because the anterior commissure there shouldn't be so um, thick. But we get little insight into the amount of airway edema here, except that it looks to be predominantly low supraglottis and true cord level. But the point of this examination uh, is the uh, status of the endotracheal tube, and this happens more frequently than you believe it, it might. As we, as we look at some close-ups of this and we look at a, uh, a sagittal image over here on the uh, left side, uh, the cuff of this endotracheal tube is supposed to be inflated below the cricoid cartilage. And so here's the cricoid cartilage back here, and the cuff is clearly inflated up in the lower subglottis, which you can sort of appreciate uh, here. So the, the, the endotracheal tube is positioned too high, and the cuff, therefore, is inflated too high. And that is uh, not good practice uh, because it can lead to uh, subglottic stenosis uh, down the road. So the other thing that's going on in this case is even compounding the situation of future tissue necrosis and subglottic and tracheal stenosis as a result of this tube positioning and overinflation of the cuff. And here, clearly, the cuff is inflated well beyond the usual cross-section of a trachea. You can know the cross-section of a trachea pretty easily nowadays. Uh, you can go down lower and see the trachea. Maybe you should see about that big. So you can see it's obviously the cuff is way overinflated in this case. But then now the, the, the cuff margin should be smooth, and you notice the irregularity, so that goes along with the irritation of the mucosa. And then beyond that, you can see there's already necrosis of the uh, mucosa because there's gas in the soft tissues. And the only way the gas could get out in the soft tissues, that's probably an ulceration there, is for the mucosa to ulcerate, and then you get gas out in the soft tissues. So this patient um, has been placed at very high risk for an eventual subglottic and uh, upper tracheal stenosis, which can be very difficult to manage airway problems. As soon as you recognize in lesser degrees of involvement of cases that the cuff is over distended, you should call the referring service. This is an extreme case. And certainly uh, in this case, uh, they need to take pressure down on the cuff because they already have tissue necrosis there. And the same goes for tube positioning. We're used to thinking about tube positioning with relationship of the tube to the main bronchi and carina. 
However, the positioning of the cuff uh, relative to the upper airway is very important in avoiding uh, very significant downstream uh, airway problems. Not sure how used to everybody is to looking for overdistended uh, cuffs and things like that. Uh, so this case is to raise that awareness. Um, of course, this requires an immediate uh, call. It's not an acute, acute problem, but it requires a definite call and a conversation with the people in the ICU managing the uh, managing the airway, and uh, it. It is of high acuity. I would say it's urgent, not necessarily emergent. But as soon as you see this, people should be made aware of it and adjust the tube position and uh, cuff pressure.